by bandits, he barely escapes with his life, he comes across battles of crusaders, he barely escapes with his life. Through a thousand difficulties, he finally makes it to the city of Cairo in rags. And he comes there in the daytime, he's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find the treasure, it's destiny, I've come all this way, I've made it, I'm gonna find this treasure. Night falls, he follows, he remembers his dream, and he goes down the alleyway to the house, and he jumps over the wall, and he goes in the backyard, and he starts digging. At this time, in the city of Cairo, there were a lot of thefts happening. And anybody who got caught was executed the next day immediately. So they think, they're waiting, they're looking for people, and they see this guy, and they catch him. And they take him to the prison. And they're like, we're going to execute you, you're one of these thieves. That's it, it's over. So he's sitting in the prison, he's so depressed and sad. And the, the warden of the prison comes to him and says, are you one of these thieves who's been doing all of the stealing and things of that nature? And I says, no. I'm going to tell you something. You may not believe me, but I'm going to tell you. I had this, I actually come from the city of Baghdad. But I had this dream that in that backyard that you caught me in, there was a treasure buried. So I came to find that treasure. The warden looks at him and goes, are you, are you? Nobody here would believe what you're saying. It's, it's ridiculous. But I believe what you're saying. You know why? Because I had a dream. I had a dream that in the city of Baghdad, in this particular house, in this particular backyard, it describes it, there's a treasure buried. But you don't see me getting up and going and following my dreams. You're out of your mind to do that. But I believe you. I know you're innocent. Get out of here. I'm going to let you go at night. But don't ever show your face. So he's so very grateful. He says, thank you. And he leaves. And with a thousand difficulties, he makes it back across the Sahara Desert. Gets back to uh, the city of Baghdad, goes home, his wife, his kids see him, they're so happy, he's so grateful just to have them. And they're sitting in the backyard and they're eating food and he's telling the story. And he gets to the part about the warden and he starts looking around his backyard. And he realizes that his backyard is the backyard that the warden had described to him that he had to do. And he goes and he digs in his backyard and there's a treasure. <laughs> So, what Rumi is saying is, whatever you're looking for is right there in your backyard. But you have to go on this journey to realize the value of it. And what we're doing here is we're saying, we're coming back to the earth and using the earth. Okay? For millennia, we built using earth, using natural materials. Now, there's nothing wrong with progress and modernization, but at a certain point, for the wellness of our living, we have to use the earth. We have to come back to the earth. One, there isn't enough material in the world to build with everything else. Two, all the material that we're building with is very toxic, and the people are getting really sick from it. Three, when you build with the earth using these principles, anybody can build. You can be a musician, you can be a writer, you can be a man, you can be a woman. If you can lift a, a coffee can of earth, you can build these structures. They work in harmony with nature, like I said, okay? And they're fireproof, they don't burn down, and they're earthquake resistant and all those things. So that's what, what it's about. That's what Cal Earth is really about, is, is harnessing the gifts that are available to us and empowering us to be able to build our own homes. Okay? So that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.